For a few years, I've been curious about the patch of prickly pears near the base of the Great Meadow at UC Santa Cruz. It's the only colony of cactus I know of on campus, and it's a pretty impressive one. The biggest patch stands about three and a half meters tall and about five meters wide. Much of the distribution of this species in California is due to being planted by the Spanish missionaries. In fact, one of the common names is mission prickly pear. But where is this plant from? The closest natural analogs and likely ancestors of this species are native to central Mexico, states like Zacatecas, Aguascalientes, and San Luis Potosí. Research suggests that this plant was probably domesticated around 9,000 years ago by indigenous central Mexicans, and the lineage likely underwent a lot of selection for large fruits and lack of spines. By the time European sailors reached the Americas, prickly pears were already widespread there. Because the pads and fruits are rich in vitamin C, they stocked them on their ships to avoid scurvy. Eventually, these sailors ended up spreading the species all around the world, and today it's found on every continent except Antarctica. It's actually a really serious invasive species in Australia, northeastern and South Africa, as well as Hawaii and Yemen. Let's back up and look at the plant itself. It's called prickly pear because of the sharp, hair-like glochids that cover the fruits and spines on the pads. There are no true leaves on a mature plant. The paddle-shaped joints are photosynthetic stem tissue, and in age these can become quite woody. Botanically, these joints are known as claydodes, and you can easily see two generations on this plant. The tough older tissue with light bluish gray tones, and the new growth with yellow green colors. These tender young pads are the ones that are harvested and eaten, known as nopales. Asexual reproduction is very common, with claydodes falling off and taking root. But the flowers are bisexual, so cross-pollination, self-fertilization, and even apomictic seeds are also modes of reproduction. Unlike most of its wild relatives, Opuntia ficus indica is an octoploid, which is both indicative of its domestic past and a source of its wide range of phenotypic variation. For example, unlike the heavily spined feral population on campus, this individual on Highland Avenue is more typical of the domestic cultivars. Globally, it's the fruits that are the most commercially important part of this plant. Although subtly different in flavor, the red, orange, and green varieties are all juicy, cool, and sweet, kind of like a cross between watermelon and cucumber. But peeling these fruits can leave you with a bunch of nasty, irritating glochids in your fingertips. To mimic indigenous technology, I tried using a soap root brush to remove the glochids. Ow. This is working pretty well so far. Once you've removed enough of the spines, you can handle it a little bit less carefully, and then use a knife to break it into one end, peel the rind back, and eventually get at the delicious orange fruit inside. Yum. But if you don't have access to an Opuntia tree, you can go to a Mexican grocery like Hernandez Market on Chestnut and Laurel and buy either the pads as nopales or the fruits, usually labeled as tunas. I took home some of these nopales to make tacos with. A quick boil beforehand helped get rid of some of the sticky mucilage that comes out of the pads when you cut them. This mucilage has some interesting properties. It apparently contains compounds that help regulate blood sugar in people with diabetes or hyperglycemia, and the mucilage can help heal skin wounds faster as well. It can also be used to remove sediment and heavy metals from drinking water, and as a non-toxic floating dispersant to remediate oil spills. This cactus jelly has even been explored as a material for diminishing food waste, and also apparently as a holographic ma I don't even know what's going on here. Prickly pears are also the host plant for cochineal scale insects that produce a red-purple dye that was highly valued in pre-Columbian Mexico and South America, and which is still used as a commercial food coloring today. Some plantations of Opuntia, called nopalries, are grown specifically for this purpose. These little wicker tubes help establish the colonies of scale insects. Opuntia ficus indica is a delicious and charismatic plant, and it's been woven into the identities of people around the world. It appears on the Mexican flag, as well as on the Maltese coat of arms, which is funny because it's not native there. 